This is a special closed-circuit presentation of Zero Hour, the new radio drama series with Rod Serling, which will premiere over Mutual on December 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Details have been sent to all stations. What will follow is a 14-minute condensation of one half-hour episode starring Academy Award winner George Kennedy. This condensation is not for broadcast. It is for audition and sales purposes only. Write a first call for all affiliates expires Monday, November 19th. Stations desiring clearance are urged to contact station relations as soon as possible. Now, Mr. Serling. I listened to the show once or twice. It seemed it was, I don't know, it, it was different. You know, they were doing where I have the five half hours with a hook every day. They did a, the one half hour complete, which actually probably was maybe a better way to go. But I thought we needed a hook to kind of make it different. And I thought we would get more promotion out of it. But looking back, I, I don't know that that wasn't somewhat of a mistake. Once Mutual finished running the last of the Lewis-directed Jake Kolos episodes of The Zero Hour on March 14, 1974, they went dark for six weeks. They were busy, completely changing the format. Now, one star would be featured in five different anthologies during a week. The show returned on April 29th. The first week's star was Mel Torme. Bye Bye Narco was the first new script produced under Mutual's umbrella. The Extortionist and the price of admission. And we have for you today to tape off the mutual line a 10 second and a 30 second promo for each one of those five programs. We ask you to make use of them liberally on a local basis uh, as the programs are scheduled. We'll just run through them on the line starting five seconds from now. This is Mel Torme. In the next zero hour, I play ordinary citizen Bud Long, and I meet a narcotics cop who makes war on drug users any way he can. What? What, what the hell? Who, who are you? Shut up. Move your butts out of that bed. Bud, who are they? Shut your mouth, lady. Hurry. Yeah, boss. Tell Jackson and Daniels to go downstairs and rip it apart. Move. Bud, how can they do this? Don't they need a warrant or something? Is your home safe? Maybe not. Join us for... Bye-bye, Narco. Cleveland Plain Dealer, June 16, 1974. Rod Serling, master writer of The Mysterious and Macabre, is playing a game of suspense with the good earth. On the side, he serves as host of The Zero Hour, a weekday radio mystery series beamed by the mutual broadcasting system. Serling's feelings about the recent upsurge in radio drama prompted a call to his rural home. It soon became apparent that he was disappointed with radio drama and TV. Serling made it clear that he has nothing to do with the writing or producing of the 25-minute dramas. I've caught the show about three times. One was passable, and two I would have flunked off the air. What they're trying to do, and they may succeed, is a show that is contemporary. But it sounds campy. The same thing applies to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater. It has to be relevant stuff for 1974. Short of that, why not resurrect old shadow recordings? So far, I've yet to see either show relate to our time, either in story or technique. If they're selling us nostalgia, they've succeeded. It's thoroughly reminiscent of radio 30 years ago. I'm not bad rapping it, he said. It's just not what I expected. I realize the economics of the situation. I wouldn't want to spend my time writing a provocative radio drama and then get a check that would buy me a carton of cigarettes. Radio drama currently has the value of an antique. Won't it change for the better? I don't know, Serling said. I have no idea. I'm frequently wrong anyhow. I thought Nixon would be out of office by now. And I thought Sonny Liston would be heavyweight boxing champion for 20 years. 
Summing up his feelings about radio and TV, Serling said, I feel the same way about radio as I do about television as an art form. It doesn't rise to the occasion like it should, although television occasionally has. Radio today is more a display case than an art form. Raymond P. Hart The Zero Hour in the new format ran 13 additional weeks before being canceled after the July 26, 1974 episode. In total, 130 episodes of the Zero Hour were produced. Most can be heard today. As I go back into what I know about your career, and instead of starting at the beginning, going back from now, we look back about nine years ago and you were directing and producing a series called The Zero Hour, which was syndicated. Yeah, radio show. I listened to some of those tapes of that show, and, uh, you know, you guys did just about everything you could possibly do. You had top-line talent, good writing, solid stories. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it work? They couldn't sell it. That's what I mean. Do you have a theory about why radio today will not go on stations anymore? Yeah, I think there's no national advertiser support. Incidentally, I was listening to your On the Air thing, and I heard Fletcher giving the closing credits. Was that a Studio One? Yes. Because Fletcher was my partner, right-hand general assistant in uh, the Sears Radio Theater, and Mutual Radio Theater that we just completed. And we ran into the same problems there. We just completed doing 235 original hours on the CBS radio network. That <laughs> was the Sears show. The Mutual picked up the second year. They had to give it up because where stations would be able to sell to national sponsors, for example, KNX here is a CBS station and yet carried the Mutual Radio Theater, including the title Mutual Radio Theater. Locally, George Nikolov, KNX, was able to sell the local time allotments to national sponsors. If I could name a few of them, Lufthansa, sure. General Motors, Wall Street Journal, were buying local spots on KNX, and yet national sponsors were not supporting the show. I think the only way it can come back is if somebody gives it a chance to come back. The problem we had on both Sears and Mutual and Zero Hour is that People seem to have forgotten that things have to be sold. It's, it would be very difficult for you to sell me something I've never heard of and didn't know existed. And once I heard of it and found out it existed, didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was true uh, to some degree of the Zero Hour show, and it was certainly true of both Sears Radio Theater and Mutual Radio Theater. Everybody had good intentions, but they sat in their offices waiting for somebody to, to call them up and buy the show. And uh, I don't think that's the way that you run the railroad. No. you, know, you got to let it let people know it's out there. The audience reaction was marvelous. People would pick it up and they'd listen to it. And as I say, mostly young audience. 